I want to thank you, Winnie, and uh, Voice It for giving youth this platform to be able to air and uh, be able to show what they're doing. It's really a nice platform and encourage the youth to take advantage of such platforms and don't just wait to be there in the mainstream media. You can voice it and you can voice your, your work, you can voice your agenda, you can voice your activities to other youth. Hi and welcome to Voice It. This is a platform where we empower millennials in Kenya to be active citizens. It's also the platform where we tell our own stories as the youth and empower each other. Today I am so excited about the conversation we are having today and this is in the agriculture sector, the opportunities that are there and also the challenges as well. And um, we all know that agriculture forms part of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's Big Four agenda and it also features in the sustainable development goals. This is when it comes to uh, zero hunger especially. And so what makes this um, conversation exciting for me is that I have an amazing young woman on set today who is going to help us delve in this conversation. So this is a discussion you do not want to miss. Stay tuned. So thank you for joining us. With me on set today is an amazing young lady. Her name is Gertrude Alwora and she is a plant pathology. Actually, let me read that title. She is a plant pathology research scientist. So yes, we are seasoned with content today. This is a discussion you don't want to miss. So thank you so much Gertrude for joining us. Thank you. So actually let's start with your title. You are a plant pathology research scientist. It's one of these things we are not used to, you know, especially when it comes to women. So please tell us about what you do exactly. Thank you, Winnie. I'm delighted to be on the show. Uh, a plant pathologist basically means we look into diseases. Ah, so a pathologist, we have human pathologists, we have a vet, mm -hmm. and now I'm a plant, so I'm a plant doctor. So if the pathologist is so big, you can just call me a plant doctor. That will be good enough. Ah, yeah. that's an, in, an, an, an interesting field, Gertrude. So how did you get into this space? Did you always want, did you envision this when you were in school? Uh, yeah, I would say yes, because uh, I loved sciences. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are among the first lot that we did the five subjects in uh, primary school. And uh, in high school, we also had a reduction of subjects. Mm -hmm. So I took three sciences. Mm -hmm. And uh, Thank you. <laughs> I was interested in taking a science career. Mm -hmm. Though we were very few in our class that took the three sciences. Yeah, yeah so even in our class uh, mm -hmm. in campus, we were very few ladies. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, the challenge in STEM has been there. Mm -hmm. So we've been having fewer women yeah. as compared to men in the mm -hmm. science subjects, mm -hmm. with most men, with most women taking the arts yeah so it's quite a challenge I was one of the women who went for the arts <laughs> yeah so it's quite a challenge really because uh, even in uh, plant pathology when I'm, I was doing that mm. we were a few ladies mm. in our class mm -hmm. so it's reflected even in the work environment you would get very few women mm -hmm. who are taking science mm -hmm. but uh, with the current ongoing talks mm. and uh, campaigns on STEM mm -hmm. we hope that we're going to get our girls on board Oh, yeah. That's actually interesting. So let me ask you before we delve, we delve into agriculture and the work that you're doing. I mean, it's it's incredible. It's amazing in terms of empowering the youth and and women in the agriculture sector. So for you as a young girl in school, what actually made you pick the sciences? Is it a love that you had, or you had an external person influence your decision when it came to that? Uh, I would say it was my admiration for the few women who were there in the science world. Ah. So I would really admire the doctors, I would really admire the engineers and the pilots. Mm -hmm. But uh, in agriculture, I wouldn't say it was a choice. Mm. Let me be honest, <laughs> I didn't choose to be in agriculture because if I was asked, I would have done medicine. Ah. But somehow I ended up in agriculture mm -hmm. and uh, I took it and uh, I enjoyed the science and I said I'm going to 
bear, to major on the science part of agriculture because agriculture is both science and art. Mm. But I said I'm going to major in the science part of agriculture. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's why currently I'm also doing my PhD in plant pathology. Wow. Yeah, so I said I'll still be that scientist that I wanted to be. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's incredible, you know. Thank you. So, uh, Gertrude, you're doing amazing work in terms of um, empowering women, especially in the coffee sector. And you've, you've done so much. I wouldn't want to be the person to tell that story. Could you please take us through that, what you're doing? Okay. Thank you, Winnie. Uh, we have an initiative that we, we have an organization of women mm. that came together. We call it Alliance of Women in Coffee. Mm -hmm. And basically what we do, we try to enable women mm. in the coffee sector mm. to be able to take up the opportunities and benefit from what the industry has to offer. So what we what we do, uh, like personally, the reason why I went into this, why I decided to join the alliance, was because uh, in my normal duty, I realized there's a gap between uh, research outputs and uh, adoption by farmers of technology. So I said, okay, now we need to bridge that gap. So I said, as a person, I'll do the research, and then I'll also try to bridge so that the farmers are able to adopt whatever outputs I come up with the technology and all that so that the farmers are able to benefit rather than I just do my research and it ends up in a journal or in a book and in the shelf yeah so the farmers are not benefiting from all that one so if I'm able to bridge that gap and do it in person then I'll ensure correct uptake of the technology and then I'll also ensure that the farmer is enjoying it and then I'm able to get back the feedback so once I get the feedback from the farmers, I'm, a, I'm also able to venture more into the research and probably even iron out the small, small issues that were there. Yeah. And then uh, why women? Mm. Mm. So it's because women present about 60 to 70 percent of the labor force in yeah. agriculture, mm. generally in Kenya. Mm. And the uh, coffee sector has the same. It's not unique. Mm. Uh, but why in the coffee industry are we not having more women uh, enjoying the fruits of coffee, like we call it the black gold. So mm. it's because when you go to the farm level, you'll get more women. Yeah. But as you move up the value chain mm. from the farm, you go to processing and then you go to the millers, mm. then you go to the auction, to the marketers, mm. and then you go to the baristas and mm. now the big hotels, mm. you get lesser and lesser women. Mm -hmm. And uh, why is this? It's because uh, the culture that we have, uh, we are being a patriarchal society like we know most African countries, mm. it's a reserve for men. Yeah. And then women, because of their articulate nature and uh, how they pay attention to details, mm. they're mostly used when it comes to manual work. Yeah. yeah when you want them to do the picking, mm. in, in coffee in Kenya we do the manual picking. You have to select a ripe cherry that's red. So you have, you know, men, uh, most yeah. men they have that, they, they, yeah, they wouldn't even tell the difference between red and <laughs> green. And green. <laughs> so you need women to do that. Yeah. And uh, when we also are doing the pruning and mm. other agronomic practices, mm. we tend to engage more women. Mm. But then that stops there. Mm -hmm. So when you go to meetings, mm. at high level meetings, you find you're maybe two women mm. or three women. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the farm, most women. of them are women. Yeah. Yeah. So then when you call a meeting, like mm. for farmers, you find that women don't come for those meetings. Mm. So, and in these meetings or in these, we call them farmer field schools, yeah. where we train farmers on how they take up technology. Mm. You find that women don't come, mm. but it's the same women who are working in the farm. Oh. So that cr clearly creates a gap between the adoption of the yes. technology yes. and, uh, uh, you know, that uh, efficient, mm. even efficient use of the technology. Mm. Because it's the men who are trained, but it's the women who are supposed to implement. Mm. So I came in, I said, I'll use this platform, the organization that is already there, to at least bridge that gap and uh, enable women to attend this training. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we are basically doing uh, when it comes now to training, we go down on the farm, we train women, we create a condition where we can train the women. So that even if they're going to do the pruning, mm. they know what pruning, how to do it. Ah. Yes, and even if they're going to use fertilizer, mm. they know what fertilizer to use mm. and why they need to use it mm. and why they shouldn't put less and mm. why they shouldn't skip and why they shouldn't put more. Ah. Because that's clearly lacking. Ah. Yeah. So what difference has that made in terms of empowering these women? 
uh, I would say it's quite immense, mm. and um, I'm glad to say that mm. uh, we've had about. Uh, we, we it's an it's an organization that we people subscribe you subscribe to the organization mm -hmm. so we take care of the small scale farmers mm -hmm. and we also take care of the estate farmers and we also take care of the professionals in the coffee mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. so for the professionals what mm -hmm. we do is we volunteer mm -hmm. our skills and knowledge mm -hmm. to the farmers mm -hmm. who are also our members and mm -hmm. other farmers who are not our members mm -hmm. so uh, this has seen some increase because we've been able to connect uh, farmers mm -hmm to marketers mm -hmm. we've been some of our members have been able to export their coffee mm -hmm. then we've also seen an increase in production mm -hmm. and uh, we have farmers attesting up to about 50 percent increase yeah. in production mm -hmm. because of the good practices mm -hmm. that we the good agricultural practices that we train the farmers and we help them to take them up mm -hmm. because uh we realize that sometimes we we roll out technology mm -hmm. But we don't tell the farmers the need to yeah. adopt the technologies mm. or why it's important to adopt. But when you go to talk to them and some you even train them and maybe do a model farm, mm. they are able to see the difference between the new technologies and the old technologies and they take that up. And there's quite mm. been an increase in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe just to bring it up, also in mm. 2014 mm. we were doing a survey. And uh, we, we were in Bungoma County and we came across households that were living in deplorable conditions mm -hmm. and uh, the women there were the most affected and the children mm -hmm. because uh, the men would get their money, the men would have a few coffee trees so when they're paid they would disappear go to the towns, mm -hmm. the normal story that we usually yeah. have in our <laughs> industries, mm -hmm. then the women would be left to fend for the children. Mm -hmm. So when doing the rounds I thought we need to empower these women and mm -hmm. how do we do it? Because this coffee belongs to the man. Yeah. So the woman is not going to get the money. Mm. Whatever I do, however much I try. Mm. So the best thing to do is why can't I give this woman some seedlings mm. so that this woman has her own something of her yes, own. what she can call mm. her own. Mm. So we started a program we were calling it the coffee kitchen garden and uh, we were taking advantage of the backyard the way we grow vegetables mm. we know women mm. are good at that you yeah. want your vegetables your skuma wiki there mm -hmm. so it them, then you can put a coffee tree here and another one here mm. and then you're able to pick your berries mm. even if you won't take it to the auction mm. you can use it for local consumption mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. again we realize that in uh, western kenya and parts of nyanza mm. there's quite a lot of domestic coffee consumption people are drinking coffee and uh, coffee is even sold in the local markets. So they sell the ground, the roasted ground coffee, so you can get it in the market. And uh, most of the people who are doing that are women. So if I have my tree, then I don't need to buy coffee from someone. Mm -hmm. I'm able to pick the coffee from my tree and then roast it and prepare it traditionally yeah. and then take it to the farm. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I can be able to get 100 bob and 50 bob or 500 bob mm -hmm. to feed my children. Yeah. And uh, eventually that will lead to this woman being economically empowered mm. and uh, they will even develop the interest mm. and we may see a situation whereby they are taking even bigger farms. Ah. Yeah, so that, it, that basically informs what we want to do and uh, that we've seen and uh, we are happy with the progress that we're doing. Ah. Yeah. That's incredible, Gertrude. And uh, we realize that right now, Agriculture is part of President Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, Big Four agenda, yeah. and agriculture has been the backbone of Kenya's economy for a long time now. And so it's one space, actually even when it comes to the sustainable development goals, I actually like your, uh, your work and what you're doing because it meets several of the SDGs. First is the zero hunger, there's yeah. the reduced inequalities, mm -hmm. and also when it comes to um, employment and decent exactly. work. Yeah. So I like that, that that touches on three of the SDGs. So maybe for someone who is watching this show right now, let's talk about the opportunities that are there because agriculture is the one of the frontiers where uh, the, the country will create, sorry, the um, job opportunities will arise from. So what are the opportunities in the agriculture and particularly, especially in the coffee industry now that this is your space? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, the coffee industry is diverse mm. with a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, not just being the farmer, mm. from the farm level, we call it the soil to cup. There are quite a lot of opportunities there. If you are an agricultural uh, graduate or uh, you've done diploma or certificate, there's quite a lot. You can do a lot of consultancy at the farm level. Mm. So that's, that presents an opportunity. Mm. Then when you move up, there's a part of the processing. 
Mm-hmm. You can also do consultancy and you can also engage into that. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also bringing youth on board mm-hmm. in terms of innovation. Because uh, when you look at the industry, we are currently using very old uh, technologies mm-hmm. uh, for processing. So if youth could come on board and have new innovations that are... Uh, se- tech savvy and that are efficient mm. and could even maybe improve on the quality or even maintain the quality of the coffee mm. that would be really nice so that's Actually, an opportunity uh, for you sorry to interrupt so speaking of uh, technology yeah. um, I know this group of um, it's a young startup IT company and one of the products they are working um, on is actually a software that they are, I've forgotten the name, <laughs> I was working on their content mm-hmm. um, and it's basically for farmers, it's a smart technology for weighing the produce because mm-hmm. um, and maybe you can tell us if this is true, they say the need was inspired actually because farmers used to get short things mm-hmm. in the weighing bit, mm-hmm. yeah because there, there is no technology, people, people weigh stuff manually. So when you're speaking about the technology, uh, is this one of the technology that um, applies? Yeah, in, yeah, that's in the yeah, that actually that actually applies because mm-hmm. when you look at the coffee industry, mm-hmm. the farmer picks the coffee from the farm. Then you have to walk kilometers, depending mm-hmm. on the location of your farm, mm-hmm. to service the factory. Yeah. So some have to walk even ten kilometers to take the coffee to the factory. Mm-hmm. But if there was a way that maybe a, an app or something mm-hmm. that you could weigh your coffee mm-hmm. at the farm level, and then the figures are reflected at the factory level, mm-hmm. then you bulk and you have something like a collection center. Yeah. Yeah. and your coffee is taken to the factory mm. in bulk mm. it will really save some time and you, and uh, then don't forget that mm. the same same women are the ones who carry the coffee so they are the beasts the beasts of burden mm. still at that level mm. so if we could get a way of easing that work mm. we would be saving the women their back the, you know the problem from uh, the back problems yeah. and even time mm. then uh, another opportunity is also at the farm level we have opportunities for apps that can help the farmers to detect the problems that they have, agronomic problems and all that. So we are calling on board youth, this is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Then when we move from there, we also have, uh, they can be marketers. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have, uh, they can be marketers, so Mm -hmm. you can buy coffee and market, you can look for consumers Mm -hmm. abroad, and uh, that's an opportunity for youth. Mm -hmm. And then we also have baristas. Mm Yeah, these are people who are trained in the art of coffee now. Yeah. That's the art of coffee. Mm-hmm. So you can be baristas. Mm-hmm. You can be, we call them quality analysts. They sip the coffee and uh, they're able to tell you if it's nice mm-hmm. or bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, you, and uh, even uh, grade it and uh, rate it mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's an opportunity for young people. And uh, that would be really nice if we have young people coming on board. Because uh, when we look at the coffee industry, the average age of a farmer is 65 years. So this is, we're looking at an industry that has a bleak future. Yeah, true. And uh, when we have, when we encourage youth, we want to make it lucrative for the youth mm. because the youth are looking for something that is not tiresome, something that is interesting, and something that is As a lot of money. making exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so if mm. we create that, then mm. we can see the youth on board, and we mm. can have a future mm. of our coffee industry. Yeah. Oh, this is great. And you've spoken about uh, immense opportunities that are there, and I'm glad because it's actually been quite insightful because most most young people always think uh, if you're getting into agriculture it's all about getting your hands dirty and going to a farm yeah. and you've seen there are opportunities for software developers for marketers exactly. for baristas so there's this uh, there's been this talk about and research done to the effect that there's a mismatch of skills in um, the labor force so what skills do these young people need even in terms of academic and lifestyle skills so that they can thrive in the agriculture sector and take up these opportunities that you've mentioned what kind of skills do they need uh for for software those ones those ones they'll do the either software engineering the normal it they've done Mm. so that one they'll still fit in the industry Mm -hmm. for the processing part and aspect they'll need uh the tech gurus, mm. the engineers mm. to do the the equipment and the processing machines and stuff like that. Mm. For marketers, they can do business and marketing. The normal business the and marketing, normal. it doesn't have to be specific for coffee. Mm. All they need to do is to get the tips and hands up on 
what happens in the coffee market. Mm. Yeah, then for the baristas, they, they are, we have special courses mm. for baristas mm-hmm. that uh, they are trained on that, on how to do that and mm. the coffee. And also for the quality, quality analysts, mm. there are special courses for those ones. But you don't have to have a background. Mm. You can you can be a accountant mm. and you can you and a barista at the same time. Mm-hmm. You can be an agriculturalist and you still be a barista. Mm. You can be a marketer mm. and you can also be a barista because these are you go to class and you're trained and you pass the exam and you can do it. So regardless of your background, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, also another opportunity is uh, we are talking of uh, environment mm. and climate change. Oh yes. And yes. Uh, we are talking of people planting trees mm. but we are talking of people planting trees mm. but we are not talking of where will they get the trees to plant mm. we are not talking of raising okay. seedlings uh, mm. yeah and having tree nurseries mm. so this is an opportunity for youth mm. because of the vibrancy of the youth they are able to set up the nurseries uh, right now there is a demand for coffee planting materials and there's a demand for fruit trees, avocados, macadamia, mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. So if youth could come, you have a youth group, you have some small piece of land somewhere, mm-hmm. you can hire or you have viewers that maybe you inherited from your parents, mm-hmm. you set up a small nursery. We will be there to volunteer technical support to you. Mm-hmm. We will guide you, we will pro- we'll help you mm-hmm. do all that mm-hmm. so that you are able to run a nursery that is sustainable and a nursery that is profitable. Uh, so Gertrude, you, you raise a valid point which is relevant to what Voicet does and you said you also empower these women about uh, their constitutional rights. And so I believe that what you don't know um, cannot help you. And in terms of um, rights, knowing your rights as a person, if you don't know what your rights are, then you don't know when they're being violated. So what exactly do you do as far as empowering these women in their constitutional rights is concerned? Uh, we we check women through their, their rights because uh, we realize that in, but most of the women we are dealing with are women from rural rural areas in Kenya, and uh, they lack that because they don't get time to attend the chief barazas. They don't get time to attend those public uh, forums that that occur. So they basically don't know what what their right is and. Uh, what is rightfully theirs, like maybe taking up a position, like they have a right, like any other person, to be a leader in their societies, to be a leader in their factories, and uh, including uh, their protection, protection as women. Yeah, so we took, we took this up because we said, apart from the technical part, they also need life skills. Yes, so we train them in leadership skills so that they are able to take up. In, uh, when we voice for them, when we advocate for them to take up spaces, mm. are they able to fit into these spaces? Mm. And are they able to deliver? Exactly. Because it's one thing to vo- to advocate for a space, mm. and it's one thing to fit into that space mm. and be able to deliver. Mm. So we want to bring up uh, round, rounded women mm. that are able to, that they know their rights, they know they are supposed to buy for positions, if there is a position that is being an elective position, they have equal rights to the men who are vying for those positions, so that they don't tend to hold back and wait for nominated places or, and wait for those slots that are, are left for women. Because most of the time, those spaces that are left for women, they're not powerful slots. True. So the elective slots are the ones that are powerful. Okay. And uh, yeah, we educate women on that. And we also educate them on uh, integrity integrity issues because uh, we don't want also to be tainted because we realize that when one woman is tainted it's all the women True. so we say we want women who can deliver we want women who are not corrupt mm. we want women who are there to rules and regulations mm. and we want women who can voice exactly. for other women that should raise a very valid point in terms of um, you want to empower women who are able to hold and raise another woman and this is this goes to something that we are always told as women we are our worst enemies and we've seen i've had um another lady actually repeat the same thing when it comes to she was involved with um, uh, um, working out on the two-thirds gender bill and she said actually some of the women in parliament were the biggest obstacle you know to the implementation of the two-thirds two-thirds gender bill. So 
what is the, your call to action in women as far as supporting and empowering each other is how do we uh, ensure that we tell each other that just because you're raising the platform or empowering another woman it doesn't dim your own candle uh, thank you really my call to action would be to encourage women to support each other because you can't grow alone so for a woman to grow you need the support of other women and uh, we also need to grow the, the youth because they present the future of our country and the future of our continent. So we can't talk about our future if you're not talking about the youth. Yes. And uh, as we part, my call to action to the youth is uh, let's take up positions, let, let's take up opportunities that are there and let's drive the agenda of this country and let's not just sit in the back and uh, talk about it, but let's put it into action. And uh, for those who are interested in what we are doing, you can find us. We have an office at Kahawa House, uh, where the former coffee board is currently the coffee directorate. We have our offices there. And you can also get us in uh, my social media page, is uh, G Alora on Facebook and uh, at G Alora on Twitter. So follow us for more updates and for more activities. <laughs>